If you're working on a Willys Jeep, you probably know that an offset narrow track Dana 44 is the easiest axle upgrade available to replace the stock Dana 41. Now this particular early Dana 44 axle I'm working on is semi-floating, has two-piece tapered hubs, and this particular axle is 10 splines. Now despite being a stronger axle, there's still plenty of room for improvement, and upgrades are available. Now I source my parts to beef up this axle from ATV Manufacturing, or widely known as HermTheOverdriveGuy.com. And that decision was made because he's a one-stop shop for everything I was looking for. Now in this video I'll show you how I install this full floating kit that will jump my 10 splines to 30, which will allow you to flat tow and also prevent you from losing a wheel a power lock, and the ring and pinion setup of the power lock will be done off camera, and disc brakes, and all kits come with everything you need to properly install them. So to begin I need to remove the drum and hub assembly, so I'll go ahead and get the drum off. Now with the screws removed, the drum should just pull right out. Move the hub cap or dust cap. The cotter pin's next to go. So the nut comes off next, and the best way to do this would be a 36 mil socket on an impact gun. Now the most difficult part of this disassembly is to remove this two piece tapered hub. I found this vintage hub puller at a flea market and without one I'm unsure if you could remove that hub. Now it's going to take a lot of force to remove the tapered hub so what I do is I put the nut back on so when it pops free you're not going to have any chance of it flying off. Now the puller just slides onto the studs. You grab your lug nuts and thread them on. Once all the lug nuts are drawn down tight you can begin hitting the handle to release the taper. When it breaks loose it should just start freewheeling. Now with the puller off the hub just slides right out. Now the backing plate can come off. Now that all the hardware is removed, you can pull off the brake back plate. Removing the axle shaft itself will require either a puller or a slide hammer. To remove mine, I'm going to use a homemade puller. It consists of an all thread rod with a coupling nut, 1 inch 14 threads to attach to the axle, the puller itself goes on next. followed by two washers and a nut. With the puller removed, the axle could come out of the housing.
Now we're ready to reassemble the axle with the new components. We'll install this oil seal with the spring facing towards the differential. This is to keep the diff oil from entering the spindle. To prevent the spring on the oil seal from falling off when you're driving it into the axle tube, I use some transmission assembly lube and pack it behind the oil seal. We'll be driving the seal in to the end of the axle tube. There are positive stops, it's machined out, so just drive it in until it stops. For this I'll use a bearing race and seal driver to hit it in. With the seal driven in, I just coat the inside with grease. The next step is to slide the axle shaft in. On the splined portion of the axle, I just slid a plastic bag over it just so it doesn't tear up the oil seal. You may have to spin it to engage the splines and it'll just slip right in. I put a little bit of gasket maker on the axle face and the spindle face. I also coated the axle shaft lightly in grease and the inside of the spindle. The spindle can go on now. After the spindle's on, you could put your caliper bracket on. You'll need to be cautious when doing this because you want your calipers to have the bleeders at the top. So depending on how your axle fits your vehicle, you'll need to index this appropriately. And now is the time to do that then followed by your grease shield. I'm also using all new grade 8 hardware and self-locking nuts and washers. At this point go around and torque everything down. For the last step you should have your disc pressed onto your hub and the pressing is actually with the studs. I prefer to put it into a hydraulic press and press them in. Other options are out there. For the bearing orientation you can really only put them on one way. The larger bearing is for the back which would also be the back side of your hub. Everyone has a preference on what grease to use. Use whatever you're happy with and everyone has a pr preference on how to grease a hub. So because this is going into a Jeep and it'll probably see water, I'm gonna fill the cavity in between with grease. The next thing will be to pack the bearing itself. To do this, put a glob of grease on the palm of your hand. The back of the bearing, scoop the grease until you notice it pushing out the front, which will look like that. Next. The oil seal goes in and the open back goes towards the bearing.
and flush to the hub face. So now the hub and rotor can slide onto the spindle. You'll need the front bearing to help guide it. Next is your flat washer. If you don't have enough room, spin and push. You may also need to tap it. When you have enough thread showing, you could put one of your spindle nuts on. I highly suggest you buy a spindle nut socket. While tightening this spin your rotor. Because you have the spindle nut socket, you can set the preload perfectly. The first nut you put on gets torqued to 50 foot pounds. While you're tightening, spin the rotor. So that nut at 50 foot-pounds is too tight. To get the proper preload, you loosen it one-sixth of a turn. So what I do is line one of the points up on the nut to a hole in the hub, and I loosen it to the next hole to your left, counterclockwise loosening. That sets your preload, no guesswork. To make it easy, I put a paint mark on the nut just so I have reference. And now it's moved to the next one over. To lock your preload in, the last washer will be installed. The bent over tang will face the inner bearing. Now the last spindle nut could go on. This one also gets torqued to 50 foot-pounds, but you don't loosen it. Now the last step is to lock that nut in from possibly loosening. And the way you do that is bend the washer on one of the flats outwards. That's all you need. And I use just a big screwdriver. The last step would be to install your drive flange or your locking hub. Well that's all there is to installing the full floating kit from Herm the Overdrive guy. It's really simple, anyone could do it and it's a really great upgrade. I'll have more updates on my Jeep in the near future, so subscribe.